will introduce the next part with a speech by Roberto Schone of Netware, Healthware. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so, hello to everybody. I would like to focus on uh, digital health. And uh, the title is uh, 10 years in 10 days because this is what is happening. And I would like to show you a real case. But before presenting it, before presenting the real case, I would like to talk about HealthWare, uh, which is an international organization. First of all, our team is working from home. We activated the lockdown even before it became mandatory and we activated the lockdown for all our teams and uh, we work even more than before i have to say and uh, we learned to collaborate and um, to develop projects together in a different manner digital health is actually facing a change, a sort of a leapfrog. Um, the expectations of the patients and the physicians are changing and uh, there is a lot of attention which is paid to telemedicine, which means that a lot of things which we used to do face to face can be done remotely. For many years, telemedicine has been developed quite slowly, but now it was speed up because, uh, of course, it started from a need. The need resulted in innovation, and innovation was adopted by um, practitioners. Now, in collaboration with the startup and with the Pagine Medica, um, we decided to do the following. On the 7th of February, we um, created a chat box for education first, education about COVID-19, and then we organized a sort of a self-check system in order to, to understand uh, what to do. Uh, so from the 7th of February, um, but of course, Italy was adapting to the new methods and to what to do in terms of technologies. And we uh, created uh, a chat box base and actually we did that and uh, the knowledge could improve. The um, chatbot is available for many sites and many people took advantage of the chatbot and uh, so this means uh, that uh, they did not call their own practitioner or they started the online monitoring the uh, system is developing a lot and all data are anonymous, data is not recorded, so all data is recorded in, in a database which is made available to institutions and it includes a lot of symptoms which are declared by the people who used the chatbot. More recently, the CDC from Atlanta in the United States uh, followed the same strategy and uh, created a sort of a chatbot for the U.S. users. So this project actually started uh, in Italy and um, I'm saying this to all our friends connected in other countries. Well, any hospital or charitable foundation or institution 
can use the chatbot for free. So if you're interested in doing this, you can contact us and you can actually implement chatbot. Um, all data is anonymous, is recorded in a database and data is shared with the Ministry for Innovation in Italy and also to the World Health Organization. That was step one. Now we are considering step two. Actually, step two is very important and will be very important in the next months because we will have to coexist with COVID at least until a vaccine will be uh, found and created. And so a lot of people will be staying at home and uh, we want to manage patients, in particular with very few symptoms from their home. So the step number two of the project was to uh, make available to practitioners a free of charge platform for a video visit. So basically a remote visit so that the patient could stay at home. And that was created for specifically for COVID, but we are using it also for other diseases. In addition to, to that, we have created a specific system to monitor patients at home, in particular, the positive patients or the patients with symptoms. So every day they have to fill in a sort of a form and then they contact the practitioner. The practitioner will see whether the conditions are worsening or not and if the person can remain at home. So if a practitioner has 40 to 50 people, patients, you know, calling all of them every single day is quite complicated. So through the app, the patients can every day enter the temperature and can answer the questions which are written by the general practitioner on the dashboard so the patient is connected to his or her own general practitioner. So the GP can check what the patient said and can contact the patient if needed. Let me show you how things have changed. This is what happened in the last two weeks. More than 1,400 GPs registered for the service and in a very short time, more than 1,000 patients were managed. This data refers to one week ago, but uh, the trend is actually increasing. And this is data we never saw in Italy uh, when it comes to the use of digital health platforms, um, both when it comes to physicians, but also when it comes to patients. And uh, it is extremely important. Uh, this is important also internationally because we know that in some markets, digital health is much more advanced. So such technologies like the chat box for barter for the self-assessment of symptoms and also the platform for the GPs and the connection to patients. Well, in just two weeks, we did something that um, would take like one year, you know, if there was no um, COVID pandemic. And so this type of technologies will be extremely useful in managing data and information in the months to come. Uh, so I actually um, invite all of you to use the platform. You can test a chatbot, everything is available online. You can ask your GP to register 
So you can invite the GP to register and uh, you can start and exchange information with your GP online. So let me conclude by saying that uh, this case study is an Italian one, but uh, it is appreciated by many countries. And uh, this is uh, an exercise of service design based on a real need of people. We rethought the user experience uh, thanks to this platform. And uh, we see that uh, practitioners are actually adopting and uptaking such a technology in a very fast way. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you so much.